After narrowly beating Newcastle and gaining a vital three points, we take a break from Premier League action this weekend as Chelsea face Leicester City in the FA Cup quarterfinals. Lads, lasses and the rest of the masses, welcome to the lead-in. Let's set the scene here. It's Chelsea versus Leicester, 11th in the Premier League versus 1st in the Championship. A very important game versus the team that we helped to win the Premier League back in 2015-2016. Every game in this competition gets more and more important, as winning this trophy provides automatic qualification into Europe, something that could be a struggle to get otherwise if we fail to keep good league form. So, we need to get past Leicester first in order to do that, a team that has been flying in the championship all season, massively ahead of anyone in the league until very recently. Their recent form is something that gives us some confidence, as despite being brilliant so far, they now have only had one win in their last five games in the league, with three losses in that time. That win was a very nervy struggle versus Sunderland, where Leicester didn't look comfortable at all. This is the perfect opportunity to take advantage of their poor form and get revenge for the 2020-21 FA Cup final that we lost against them. They'll be looking to regain some of that earlier form against us, so let's take a brief look at how their team could line up for this one. Firstly, let's talk absentees. Leicester have a few players out for this one, with both right-sided players in Ricardo Pereira and Dennis Pratt out injured, along with Casey McAteer and, more importantly, Jamie Vardy. There are doubts over Wilfred Ndidi's availability, who probably isn't ready for a start yet. I'll be putting Enzo Maresca's side into Leicester's standard 4-2-3-1 formation, but due to some of those injuries, they could possibly line up differently. First up in goal, though, is going to be their number one, number 30, Mads Hermansen. The Dane usually starts for them, and since the game is an important one, I don't expect a rotation here. The defence is going to be changed slightly with absentees in key positions, so starting with the right back, it's going to be another out of position shift for Hamza Chowdhury, filling in for Ricardo Pereira. The centre back partnership will be the same as we saw versus Hull last weekend, with Wout Weiss starting on the right, and ex Southampton giant Yannick Vestergaard on the left. Finally, finishing up the back line in the left back spot will be James Justin, who usually plays on his weaker side. Moving into the midfield, we'll start with the two deep midfielders, and like normal, a combination of Harry Winks on the right and Kiernan Dewsbury Hall on the left will suffice. In the more advanced roles, we'll start on the right, where scorer of the winner versus Bournemouth in the last round, Abdul Fatawu, will play once again. In the centre, Turkish international Yunus Akgun will play once more, looking to add more goal contributions to his game. Finally, over on the left will of course be Steffi Mavadidi, who we all know can be a real threat. That leaves the one man up top, and in the striker role, because of Jamie Vardy's absence, will of course be Pat Sendaka, the Zambian who has 11 goals and assists in 15 games so far this season. As I said, just a brief overview of what I expect their team to look like, there could be more rotation in the side in truth, but I think they'll feel a strong starting 11 to try and beat us. Speaking of, let's quickly take a look at how Chelsea could line up. We have finally started to see the size of the injury list shrink, but still have six major injuries to the squad, with other absentees to contend with in this game too. I think that we'll continue to use the 4-2-3-1 despite this, with a bit of a shake-up to hit the team. Starting with the goalkeeper, I'm going to be sticking with Georgia Petrovic. Though Sanchez could rotate in here as the cup keeper, I think the Serbian's ability in penalty shootouts could be a factor in this game, and so he retains his place just in case that happens. The back four is going to be similar to our last match versus Newcastle, starting with the right back it's once again going to be the inform Malo Gusto. The centre back pairing could change, Benoit Badiashiel is back in team training but I don't expect him to start, instead the other Frenchman Axel Di Sassi will play on the right as always, alongside Trevor Chalabar. Thiago Silva could play here in truth but we haven't seen him play since his injury and I'm not sure if he'd be risked. Over on the left, despite the return to team training for Ben Chilwell, I'm going to be putting Mark Kukurea in once again. I think it would be foolish to rush Chile back into the lineup so soon, so the Spaniard starts for the second game in a row. Moving into the midfield, we'll start with the holding roles, and this usually picks itself, however there are key absentees in this area, so I expect change. Enzo Fernandez is suspended for accumulation of yellow cards, so will not feature alongside Moises Caicedo, who of course starts. With Enzo's absence, the obvious replacement would be Cesare Cassade, but due to him being cup-tied for his involvement earlier in the campaign for our opponents, he is ineligible to play. Carney Chukwemeka recently returned and could slot in here, but I fear for his fitness and wouldn't rush him in too soon. Thus, I think that Conor Gallagher will drop back into this role, with him vacating the number 10 position. With how Pochettino likes to use Enzo in this role, pushing him high, I think he'll do well here. 
Ahead of them in the attacking midfield roles, let's start on the right where I don't expect Cole Palmer to be dropped. Two more goal contributions in his last game and he keeps getting better and better. In the centre, this is what excites me. With Gallagher dropping deep, it opens up this space for Mikhailo Mudrik to play from the start. I think Poch would be very foolish to not involve him in this one, and considering how well he's played centrally for us, including getting the winner last game, in recent times, I think he's the most likely to play here. We saw Poch make a similar decision in the previous round versus Leeds, in which he also played very well. Finishing up this line will be Raheem Sterling, who despite not being my personal favourite player, I expect to do well after he was once again snubbed from the England selection, something that has motivated him to do well in the past, and could do here. Up top will of course be Nicholas Jackson, who's currently on a run of 3 goals in 3 games, and could extend that to 4 here. I foresee him causing those two centre backs a lot of issues, and possibly adding to his impressive goal tally already this season. This is what I'm expecting, but what would I personally change? Well, not much can change due to the rotations that we are having to make, but I'll list off some players that I'd personally like to see get some minutes, most of which will be youth players. The main one is Carney Chukwameka, I'd love to see him get some minutes and continue to recover from his injury. Obviously Noni Madaweke should be getting some involvement off of the bench here too. Honestly I'd prefer for him to play over Sterling in the first place but I doubt he will. Alfie Gilchrist should be getting some involvement here, especially if we go into extra time. Both Leo Castledine and Tyreek George played for our under-21s this week, but with them only getting around 20 minutes each, they both could be in contention for cameos here, as could Jimmy Tauriainen, who didn't play for either youth team, and could be set to feature here. So those are my lineups, and I'd like to hear from you guys too, so for today's question of the day, answer me this. Which player do you predict will be the player of the match in this game, and why? Let me know in the comments down below with QOTD at the start as always, and I'll pin my favourite answer. Now we haven't played Leicester so far this season, with them being a championship side, so I'll be going a bit more in depth for this one. Let's take a look at how they play, and what they do well. Firstly, Enzo Moresca's side is built on the foundation of one key tactic, the inverted fullback. Similar to styles we've seen in the Premier League this season, this ideology helps the team control the ball more, with a focus on midfield superiority. Let's take a look at what this looks like. Usually it would be Ricardo Pereira operating here, but instead Hamza Chowdhury will be filling in, and as a midfielder by trade, he is suitable for the role. Because that's mainly what this system does, adds an extra midfielder into the mix and makes the team transition into a three at the back system when in possession. The idea of Leicester's setup is largely to achieve one of two goals, either create an overload of players in the central area which in turn opens up space and passing lanes, or draw out the opposition centre back in order to create 1v1s out wide and in the centre. They back themselves to be able to win their 1v1s and make the most of playing in tight spaces. They play out from the back most of the time, with the goalkeeper often coming into the back line to create a four, and the central centre back tasked with playing direct passes through the lines when the space opens up for it. A lot of the time this is a pass into the striker who will drop deep, dragging a defender with him or overloading the midfield with an extra man. From there they play it into wide areas and try to fashion chances to cut the ball back, either with the wingers or the advancing centre mids who are always willing to get forward into the box. They are very flexible and can do these objectives regardless of whether a team is playing a 4-2-3-1 like this example, a 4-3-3, or even a 4-4-2. And that fluidity is something that has made them a nightmare to play against for almost every team in the championship so far. Defensively, they do something slightly interesting too. Instead of the inverted fullback dropping back into their natural position when Leicester lose the ball, Enzo Maresca's men opt to retain their shape and counter-press in order to try and win the ball back, with the winger on that right side, usually Fatawu, always willing to get back and help out defensively if needed. However, if they aren't able to win the ball back quickly and the opposition string enough passes together, the fullback will retreat, with the winger still over there to help out, they end up in almost a five of the back at times when under real threat. So how do we combat this awkward style? Well I think that Leicester are stylistically a good matchup for us. Despite having some answers to it, their game plan is made more difficult to do against the 4-4-2, which is how we usually set up defensively. A compact midfield makes it harder for them to create those man advantages centrally, and though this would usually give them more time on the ball with their centre backs and goalkeeper, something they like having in general, our press is so aggressive that I don't foresee this being much of an issue. We've seen that Leicester's centre-backs, usually Wout Weiss, have been caught on the ball this season, especially more recently with this patchy form Leicester have come into. David Luiz by looks, David Luiz by nature at times, the Belgian has been better than his Premier League days, but still has those moments of head loss and under the severe pressure that we employ, he could be the press trigger in this game and we might be able to create opportunities via turnovers. 
As for how we can go about offensively, Leicester's side neglects the wide areas of the pitch, pushing men centrally for more control. We do the complete opposite, neglect the middle of the pitch and play the ball wide. With the space that is left in those areas when Leicester invert their fullback, I think we can exploit this. The wide right battle will be one to watch out for especially, Malo Gusto and Cole Palmer linking up against James Justin on his weaker side will likely be our main form of attack, and though he will get support from Winks or Dewsbury Hall, the latter does like to get forward and there could be opportunities to create 2v1s when he has done so. We'll have to be wary of set pieces in this game as Leicester do have some capable players in the air, and we've been disorganised from these scenarios all season. Hopefully the incoming ex-Brentford set-piece coach Bernardo Cueva, who we've bought for the 2024-25 season, can help rectify some of these issues, but until then, Poch and his staff have to get us organised from these scenarios, lest we concede a costly cheap goal in this game. For a score prediction, I'm going to be predicting a Chelsea win. Leicester are without some key players and aren't in the greatest form, and with us scoring for fun at the moment, I believe we will be able to score against them. Leicester's offence hasn't faltered much though, so I expect them to score too. I'll be going for 3-1, with Jackson, Mudrick and Sterling getting goals for the Blues, and a header from Vestergaard being the Fox's way of scoring. We'll have to wait until the game to see if any of my predictions are correct, and as always, I'll be live streaming after the game to give my first reactions. But if you can't wait until then, maybe watch one of these two videos on screen in the meantime. Thank you guys so much for watching, and remember, in the rain or in the dry, Keep that blue flag flying high. Come on, you blues.